Sean Chipperfield and Jack Whelan. I'm again joined on commentary by Mark Shepherd. How do you see this one going, Mark? Wow, what a final. I mean, I think this is the one we, we all wanted to see. I mean, you, I think it's always the case. You watch Sean Chipperfield, you can't understand how he ever loses, but he does sometimes, and probably if he was going to lose to anyone. I mean, Jack has been the form player of the weekend. He's reached both finals. <laughs> well, setting the standard of what's to come with that break. Look at this. Yeah, that's going to be a big part of this match. Neither of these guys are big into missing balls, so they're going to have to make their own opportunities. You can imagine it's going to be a pretty quick final. Sean Chipperfield comfortably the quickest or one of the top three, I would say, on the tour. Jack, a pretty swift player himself. So you'll see the eagle-eyed ones amongst you will notice that it's now a race to six, best of 11. Probably just ran out of position here, not on either of the two balls that he was trying to land on. He's still, he's got a recovery ball and the one that's kind of in the middle of that pack, he can cut it back to right middle. Yeah, this actual pot's all right, but then he's going to have to get back on the two that he was attempting to get on the middle one of them. He's going to have to come back for that now. It's okay. Yeah, it's a funny position. The balls are all obviously in very easy possible places, but they're somewhat covering each other. Yeah, I think you can just pop this to left centre and just nip the cue ball back into the red. <coughs> pushes that one now he's on the one to the right of the pack to bottom left and again just a, a gentle stun shot to hold the cue ball yeah as it happened that wasn't the worst thing than both going in there are times when that can be pretty disastrous because that was the ball you were playing on and you're not necessarily on anything else if he's straight here he's perfect this is just the start you want, isn't it? Yeah. Such a nice, straightforward finish. I mean, he's taken them well, don't get me wrong, but this was about as easy an opportunity as you could have wished for after the first break. And we're going to see a lot of that in this match. Sean loves the first visit clearance if the balls are remotely open. Brilliant stuff from Jack. And he takes the first frame. It's one frame to nil. And if you would be so kind to like and share the stream today, I'm sure there's lots of people out there who would like to watch this final. So if you get the chance also to subscribe to the channel on YouTube, we're streaming across Facebook and YouTube. And uh, yeah, we need to let people know that this final's on. So any chance you get to share it is very much appreciated. First of two big finals today. This is the Jason Owen Open we're watching now and then we've got the main tour event final which I believe is provisionally in the diary for five o'clock this afternoon. That will also feature Jack Whelan against Clint Ianson in that final. So Jack will obviously be very keen to win at least one trophy and, and pretty keen to win both. He popped into the commentary box after the last match and when we were congratulating him we were saying that the job wasn't done, which I guess is the right mindset. I mean, it seems like there's plenty to celebrate already when you're in two finals, but he's, he's absolutely right that having come that far, he wants to make sure he gets over the line and lifts the trophy. And a dry break there from Sean brings Jack back to the table. And yeah, just going back to that point, it really shows the standard that these players set themselves. The fact that you know, for Jack, it's job nowhere near complete. I mean, his words were still a long way to go. You know, he said, uh, all, he said, still got all the hard work to do, which is, which is incredible when you think he's battled through, I don't know how many matches, probably in the region of, I don't know, we'll, we'll, do, we'll do the maths in a minute for, from 256 down to, down to two, where are we, like seven matches? I'm not sure off the top of my head. So somewhere, somewhere north of a dozen matches anyway to get to two finals and um, 
you know, all that hard work that's gone. But for Jack, it's, you know, it's only just, it's only just started. As I say, a lot of people would be happy just to be in one final, but he wants to, he wants to finish the job now, get two titles under his, under his belt for the weekend. Yeah, and that's the winner's mindset that leads to lifting the title. Lots of different groups of people, I guess, on the tour. There's a few of the elite players, which includes these two, who are coming with the intention of winning it, and anything less in a way might be seen as a disappointment. You've got others who a deep run would be enough, and some, I guess, just winning a few early matches would be enough. Everyone's got their own targets for the weekend. I mean, just to put this achievement into context, I think... um if you spoke to the bookmaker before the event and asked him to price Jack getting to two finals or even Jack lifting two trophies, what kind of price that would have been? I mean, I imagine it would probably be in the thousands to one. Yeah, yeah I mean, this is such a stacked field. It's hard to think of many tournaments. I mean, not all of the 256 were likely tournament winners, but there were a pretty long list in that. It wasn't like there were just five you were picking between. There were yeah. 10 or 15 that could be credible winners. And having to do it in both tournaments, I mean, as you say, seven matches, I think, to have got to the final in the main event and probably five or six, I guess, to have got to the final in this one. That's a lot of pool to have played. Yeah, eight, eight matches to, to, well, I think seven matches to here, I think. My mass is right. So 256, 128, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4. And uh, the final is the eighth match. And uh, no mistakes from Jack. And all Sean's done it so far is have his hand on the table once. Well, break off once. He finds himself 2 0 behind. And that is the kind of level we're playing at now. I think to a point, the fact that both of these are quick attacking players probably helps them a bit. The people that are having to grind out each frame, it's, it's a pretty long weekend if you're playing eight matches where every shot's a safety shot and every shot takes a pint of blood. Like These guys get about the clearances so quickly, at least they're having a little bit more time between the matches to recover. At this level, it's often a lot about the break. One dry break so far from... Sean is the only real difference between them that allowed Jack in for the second of his two frame wins so far. That'll be Jack breaking off in frame three. It's all about momentum in these longer frame matches. This isn't as long, of course, the, the tour final is best of 15, first to eight. This is only first to six, so a good start, pretty imperative. Yeah, 2 0. He's a third of the way there, breaking off in the next. and times to break anything like he did in the first look at this again my goodness probably hit that even better well you you fear for anybody when they're playing against Jack Wien in, in this form but when Jack's breaking well as well breaking well and playing well it's a dangerous combination yeah he just seems to have got a break that he's happy with just looks like he's expecting to pot a couple each time and it's not just the possing them, it's the fact that he keeps leaving these kind of finishes. Yeah, this one not without his problems, though. If you look at reds, and you've got the one just above the centre pocket on the on the cushion, you've got the two kind of just to the right of the black spot, which are on top of each other. Then you look at yellows, they have their problems. The yellow on the side cushion and the yellow doesn't go to bottom left, so... It's not going to be a straightforward finish. Yeah, it's just one ball away from being... If that red wasn't covering the bottom left-hand corner pocket, the yellows would all be pretty straightforward. But as you say, there's, there's problems with both sets. Well, the, the, I think the other issue for yellows, it doesn't have an easy opening. He's got the, he could play the plant to middle, but it's not an ideal opener. He's got the easy red. I think, for me, reds are probably the ball because you've got the, the starter to to left corner and you can then float up to clear the one on the left side cushion so nominating yellows yeah he's going for yellows 
Yeah, well, I agree. It's, it's pretty finely balanced. You could make a case both ways, and that's why it's taken him so long to decide. I think, I think probably the teller is that these two reds that I mentioned just to the... Oh, it's missed the opening ball. Did not expect that. So he's on yellows, but that's going to be limited consolation right now. So Sean faced with the same issues. Well, the only ball that's really causing him a problem is the yellow um, that's, I guess, closest to us on this, near this bottom rail. Um, because it's blocking the pocket for the two reds to the right. They would both pass into, into that pocket if that yellow wasn't there. So I wonder if he'd have a plan to maybe try and move that yellow. Yeah, I mean, the fact that he's walked around the table three or four times kind of tells a story here. Like he's a guy that doesn't really bother walking around the table to compose himself or anything like that. It's only when he's having to plot out a route that isn't completely obvious. Because the other saving factor for Jack there in missing that plant to yellow is that he left the yellow over the the right middle pocket otherwise those two reds would have passed into there so it happened Sean found a pretty good way of unlocking these yeah yeah that was a favorable kiss he's got this one long and mm. now suddenly he's only really got one problem left on the table and that's the ball just above the left middle pocket yeah it's amazing somehow one good shot I mean, he was trusting to luck a bit there. Like, he was obviously playing a cannon broadly along those lines, but you couldn't be certain it would have turned out quite like that. But that's... He's played the right shot, and he's got payback for it. He's got a nice angle here. It's to stun across. You expect him to get this. Doesn't have to do too much with the cue ball. He'll just want to stun it off the cushion so he's not actually on the rail itself. And he just... Little smile on his face there because I think he thought he'd miss that for a second, just floated away from the cushion. But the pocket took it. Yeah, on a club table, that's not going in. It's only the fact it's a new cloth that helped that in. So, a good clearance. That first little nudge into the two reds just was the key to the frame that opened it up. And Sean just diving off for a bathroom break. While the referee sets the balls. And that will give us an opportunity to thank the sponsors for this weekend, all of the sponsors who make this event even possible. And there's a lot that goes into these events and uh, all of the clubs that are on board and uh, that was timely as the onboard logo was on the screen and they are one of our key sponsors. They provided all the shirts for the players that you see this weekend, the red and black shirts, which looks absolutely fantastic. And to, to all of those clubs, to All Stars and Pete Wallington, to Club 147, to Fishers over in Crewe, to Legends in Braintree, to Milton Keynes Sports Bar, Off the Rails, to Rax in Maidenhead, to Savannah JJ Falls Club, in uh, near Manchester, Spencers of Yarmouth, Spots and Stripes here in London, the court in Peterborough, and of course to Jason Owen, the title sponsor of this event, who uh, done so much for the game and continues to do so. We thank them all for bringing this event and making it possible and also to all the referees, the table technicians, to Zach Leonard, to Andy Johnson, Mike Perkins, and of course to the main man, Neil Toms, who worked tirelessly to put this event together. It really is unbelievable what that man does, constantly answering questions, answering his phone, answering queries to players. And it's not just at the event, it's prior to the event in the build-up. He's a very busy man takes dozens of phone calls. Also not forgetting Beer Productions who are providing this stream to Paul and George who do such a great job and uh, they are a consummate perfectionist as you can see from the output over this weekend. 
And thanks also to Mark, who's been co-commentating with me over the weekend. I'm doing a great job. He's, uh, great events. Look at that. What a picture that is of the arena. Just a, one or two tables. The ladies' event coming to a conclusion. All the tables perfectly aligned. And last but not least, a big sh shout out to you, Nick. You've worked tirelessly doing 14 hour days. I think <laughs> you have something interesting and amusing to say. It gets a little tricky after a while. So it does. <laughs> Excellent yeah. effort. I, I, I'll, <laughs> I'll be honest that uh, I, I think the people who deserve the biggest thank you are the. the um, the people watching at home having to put up with listening to me. <laughs> so, well, yes. Yeah, I'm sure there'll be a few comments saying we should have knocked off a few hours early. But, but no, I mean, to, just to echo all of that, just how much work goes into it and how much work Paul and George do behind the scenes to make this possible. I mean, you can see the production values have increased so much over the last few years of streamed pool, like how good quality it all looks now and how we all expect to be able to just see whatever match we want on the internet pretty much straight away. That, comes with a lot of hard work behind the scenes to achieve that. So Sean back with us. So um, went dry on the first break, wants to make sure he doesn't do the same here. He has. <coughs> a couple of the balls threaten the pocket. What a time for your break to let you down, it's horrible. It's kind of kind of happened to Danny at least in the semi-final and, and now following the same pattern for Sean. He's just shaking his head in the corner, he's frustrated, but what can you do? No, it's not going, it's not going. Yeah, it's very hard to find many chinks in the armour of Sean's game, right? I think maybe he hasn't quite had the, the break going as well as some of the other very top players. I mean he's certainly been every bit as good or better once the balls are split up. He seemed to hit it pretty hard. I mean it's not obvious. You couldn't really point to that and say what was wrong with it, but it does seem to have had a few dry breaks in some of the matches we've watched. <laughs> well, a completely routine position. After that first shot, you can see Chance left himself. Not in the absolutely optimum position. So I'd be interested to hear the views of the viewers and who they think is going to win this match. Obviously, Jack got the advantage at the moment, but what's your, your scoreline prediction? defining moment of Jack's weekend. I mean, there's such a range of outcomes here, like from winning two titles to losing in two finals. It's a pretty broad spectrum, and we can see from his reaction earlier that how much the actual winning means to him. Dearly love, if he could get this first final on the board, it would, in a way, take a lot of pressure off for the main turf final this afternoon. Yeah, he's missed that red, and um, it was actually made more awkward. When, when you've got to play them at that really gentle pace, you've got to be so much more accurate players prefer to be able to stun a ball in don't they it's a you know just to put that more kind of determined stroke on the ball you can be more accurate yeah keeping your arm moving in a straight line whilst having more time spent on the shot is harder some players like rolling the ball i mean everyone has their own preferred style but as you say most of the top players prefer to put a confident stroke on it chris huff thinks that chippy wins six five Who's going to argue with that? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be about Sean's break, really. If he can't start making one off the break, I think it's going to be a long way back. But if he gets the break going, you definitely wouldn't bet against it going to a decider. I think Jack wanted to bring that yellow out just slightly more and open the path for the red that's just below the black into the same pocket. But he has got it to middle. Yeah, I mean, from right behind it, from that camera angle, you're looking and thinking, well, definitely drop it in the middle, but it's actually a far more difficult shot than that made it look. It is tricky. And he needs to hold for the other red, so it needs to be a delicate shot while well, he played that well. 
Yeah, and actually that's turned out pretty nice now. He's got a good angle over the one to the bottom right-hand corner to get back towards the middle of the table for the last ride. Yeah, just needs to consider the cue ball on that last ride because obviously the black doesn't pass to the left corner. And I was just about to say, finishing anywhere to the right-hand side of the table brings the yellow on the cushion into play. That's kind of the natural angle that you would normally want to stun down. And I think he was conscious of that. And as a result, he's, he's overhit it by quite a margin. Yeah, it's that kind of shot where you're, you're forcing an angle where there isn't one really there, where you just catch the ball a fraction thinner or thicker and it really changes yeah. how far the cue ball goes. If it was just a sort of straight pot, I don't think he would have misjudged it by that far. I think he, he's going to be forced into doubling this into the, into the top corner. I mean, there is an option to reverse double it into the middle, but I think that's a tougher shot. Yeah, I mean, the advantage of just playing into the corner is it's a much more natural positional shot. You can just stun the white down for the, the black into the, the corner. I mean, it's not a... No double into the corner is ever a certainty. It's, it's not in the worst place to play it. It's, it is a makeable shot. You can see how frustrated he is tapping his cue on the floor. He's um, shaking his head. Well, it's very annoying to be playing a shot that's... A, I mean, it's probably better than 50-50, but well under 100%, whereas if he was just straight on this ball, there's yeah. no way he could have missed. No. So, double the corner it is. Expect him to go close. He's nailed it. Absolutely nailed it. Sean would be frustrated. He'd be sat in the corner just thinking that he had a glimmer of hope there and a way back to the table to get to two all and uh, Jack nails the double. Yeah, I mean, that one hurts you more than your opponent just clearing up because you, you know, <laughs> hope's the thing that kills you, as they always say. You, you see Jack kind of put his hand up in, in apology to Sean, but, you know, I, I don't think you need to apologise in those moments. I mean, OK, you ran out of position and you recovered. I mean, it's the same thing. He played a great shot to recover, so, you know, he, he didn't get lucky. <laughs> no. No, I mean, a, a sporting gesture, and that's the, the kind of guy he is, but yeah. yes, I understand what you mean. First time having a, a referee, so the players not having to rack the balls themselves. One less thing to think about, and one less thing to blame themselves for if the balls don't split up well. These are definitely much easier cloths to rack on. The, the green tournament cloths we played on until comparatively recently were quite challenging. You, you often used to see referees have to have several goes at it, and particularly wearing those white gloves. They're actually the least suitable things in the world for holding onto the balls because they're very slippery. So, leading by three frames to one, it's Jack Whelan that steps up to break in frame five. It's noticeable what a deliberate break it is. We've seen this a couple of times. When he steps up to the table to break, he kind of looks down at the floor just to make sure he's set in exactly the right place and think about where he's... Put his arms and feet. Like some players just sort of naturally fall into a shot. He's obviously thought about this and wants to make sure he's got every detail perfect. Yeah. And again, it just, I think, I kind of saw him press down on the table, a little shake of his head. And it's only really just frustration that he's getting these um, really open tables. But there's just, there's just problems, problems galore. You know, if you if you go yellows, then they've all got a pocket. But the the black, I mean, the black's horrible anyway. Whichever set you go, um, I think it probably has to be yellows because the red um, towards the um, left hand side to the left of kind of the black spot where you know you can see it's covered by the yellow. This is very awkward clearance. And there's no really natural balls to try and develop the black either. So, and the black's guarded by those two reds. If he if he went for reds, he could use the one the, the red just to the side of um, the black to try and flick it out. But yeah, it's it's just nasty, isn't it? Yeah, I mean the yellow's ball, balls all go. I think he may just have to take his medicine. I think the black does go long up past the the red. May just have to settle for dropping in behind it. Yeah. Again, on a club table, 
Well, club table, you play these and you can sometimes catch the far jaw of the middle pocket if they're not set properly. But I think these tables are good enough quality and the cloth's flat and quick enough that you can play them up the line without too much trouble. And we will have opportunities to move the black. I don't really see him wanting to do it here. I mean, in theory, he does have an angle. But yeah. yeah, I mean, he's, he's got the perfect angle here, actually, to knock it out. Um, the only issue is it would be easy to get stuck. He's definitely going to try. Oh, look <laughs> how a, good has that turned out? What a great shot. He has judged that to absolute perfection. Look at this. This could have gone wrong. He hit it in really nice pace, actually, because um, hitting at that pace gives the, the white ball much more chance to get out. Yeah, I mean, the reason I was... He had the perfect angle. The reason I was saying I wasn't sure if he'd go for it was because I wasn't sure he'd end up with position on the last yellow. Yeah. There was yeah. every chance, as in the one at the bottom of the table. Yeah. yeah, It sort of felt like sometimes you're better not to move a ball you don't need to. But now, I mean, it's turned out so well, obviously. With the benefit of hindsight, of course, that was the right shot. So he just needs to make sure he leaves himself the right angle of the, the penultimate yellow, which he'll take to the middle pocket from the angle he's now left himself. Again, we underestimate these shots because the players make them look simple, but even that shot there, the, the, the little gentle drag shot where he needed to hold the cue ball at the top of the table, and he also pinched the pocket a little just to, to hold the cue ball. So, oh, wow, did not expect that miss. No, I mean, he, he did play that at quite a lot of pace. I, I yeah. think he was trying to get off the cushion. He, he, well, again, with the benefit of hindsight, you feel maybe if you just screw it in slowly and leave yourself the white on the cushion, but a definite shot. Yeah, he needed to just stun the cue ball out because he couldn't just drop the yellow in because of the red in the middle of the table was blocking his path through. So he just needed to make sure he left a little bit of angle and just off the cushion so he could get to the back of the cue ball to make sure that the last yellow was a formality and ultimately it's cost him his visit. Yeah, I mean, he definitely had to screw back. It was, it was injecting the extra pace to force the, the ball off the cushion that did it. I was just... Oh, wow. cue ball, that is... That is a touch unlucky, you've got to say. I mean, OK, he's... he's the cue ball's just gone across table, and it? You could say he'd have hit one of those reds and he'd have been plumb yeah. in as well. I mean, OK, it's not, it's not been hand in it's gone kind of directly off the cushion but even so that's you, you wouldn't have expected that you just you could, just couldn't have seen that coming no i mean i don't think sean's particularly a guy that lets these things game down but he's certainly not going to be thinking it's his day right now struggling to get into this match yeah and what a key moment as well because you know if if he doesn't find gravity there he's got a decent chance at three two and back on serve as well uh, and as it happens, Jack, with just a simple four-ball clearance to now extend his lead by three frames to go four frames to one. And it's going to be a long, long road back for Chippy. In a race to six, he needs to get going. It's going to be his break in the sixth frame. Um, so he will have a chance at the table, but it is one He's in a must-win situation now. He, the only thing he can do now is stop Jack from getting to the hill. The longer he can hold him off, the better chance he's going to have. Yeah, coming up next, his most important break of the weekend. He's gone dry in his first two breaks. If he does that for a third time, it's pretty hard to see a way back into this match. I don't know if he'll be coming around to look at the pack here. The, the referee is giving it plenty of attention, but Chippy wants to be absolutely sure these are racked up, right? Really putting the pace into it. I mean, you couldn't hit the balls any harder. You can see a slight frustration there, which you don't often see from him. I mean, he... He could have gone in two different directions there. I think he was already hitting the ball as pretty much as hard as anyone in the tournament. Maybe it was an argument for taking a bit of pace off. There are definitely people around the room who don't have anywhere near his cue power who've managed to find some kind of break just by hitting a slightly more controlled white. He went the other direction and really put the power into it. 
unfortunately, with the slight exception of the black, which is does pop but is somewhat shielded, these yellows are pretty open. So, as he sits in his chair, he's going to be assuming that the score line is going to be 5 1 in a minute or two's time. It's a very frustrating position to be in this because Sean's cleared up the one opportunity that he did have and no reason to think he's not in every bit as good a form as usual but so far just struggling to get any opportunity at the table long way to go yet but if Jack does go on to win this fairly comfortably it could end up looking a one-sided scoreline but it's only really a reflection of the fact that Sean's had these dry breaks so far So purposefully playing up the table early on in the clearance, that one yellow that covered by the two reds furthest up the table, although not a difficult pot from this position, is one that could have been more difficult to get on. So sensibly taking that out of the way early on and then he can concentrate at the bottom of the table. Because of the position of the black, it's kind of important how you get onto it. It's not one of those ones where you can afford just to take the yellows in any order and assume you'll be okay to get on the black. He's got to either leave himself an angle to drop behind it and play it into the opposite corner or choose to cannon it out which looks like it may be his choice so that's turned out pretty good I mean much like the cannon he played in the, the last frame it wasn't a foregone conclusion that that was the right shot to play because there was a chance that he could have lost the white whilst playing it and not left a, a shot looks like he's got this yellow up the line and he's also got a bit of angle on it which is handy because he can get across for the choice of the remaining two yellows oh, in fact was able to play it dead slow and hold Looked like he maybe had to show too much angle for that but played a very controlled shot for a, a big guy that generates so much cue power what a lovely deft touch that was Screw that by an inch or two, but that won't pose a problem. It's yeah, yeah, it's one of those you can just nip the cue ball back, just land above that right middle pocket to leave the black. Yeah, leave a slightly longer black, but you're always backing them to get this. Yeah, when you pot as well as Jack leaving the black for this kind of mid distance isn't much of an issue. I think Jack Whelan on this form is just like an unstoppable train. Yeah, I mean, you can't argue with Jack's role in this, and he's going to be a deserved winner if he does go on to win it. I feel a degree of sympathy for Chippy just because he hasn't really had much of a chance to show what a prolific break builder he can be. So it's going to be Jack breaking off in frame seven. He's got the luxury of knowing that he's going to have several of his own breaks to get over the winning line, so very much has his own destiny in his hands right now. I think Chippy just looked across at me and just shook his head and uh, held up three fingers, and I think just signifying that he's had three dry breaks he just can't do that against Jack Whedon when he's playing like this. There's not much he can do about it. No, and when he looks back at the breaks, if he wants to watch the stream afterwards, I mean, I don't think he'll find that much wrong with it. It's just, he hit them pretty hard and pretty straight, but just nothing went in. Well, now Jack's turned to dry break, and Sean gets a look at the table. He has to be, has to take a pragmatic pragmatic approach to this he has to think that he still has a chance he can still win from here I'm sure he's come back from worse positions than this in his career just a reminder that this is the first of two finals that we'll be bringing you live coverage of today this is the Jason Owen Open final the main turf final which also features Jack Whelan, this time squaring off against Clint Ianson, is scheduled for 5 o'clock this afternoon. 
And that should be a cracker. I mean, that's been a, a proper tournament. 256 players, best of 13 frames through to the semi-finals, and best of 15 in the semis that we saw last night. And Jack Shade, exactly the kind of form that we've seen so far in this match, pretty much all the way through that tournament. That's why he's in that final. Right now, though, the job in front of him is pretty simple. It just needs to win one of the next five frames to lift this trophy. Maybe a degree of relief for Sean just to be at the table, just cross a few balls. This has been a bit too much of this final for his liking. Oh, dear. Oh, no, no. Oh. I was going to say, he's spent a bit too much time in his chair. He's not going to yeah. enjoy the, the visit back to his chair right now. I think that's the problem. I think that's the problem, is that it's just spent so long in his chair, just not had a chance in the balls, and it just showed how frustrated he is. He'll be fuming the fact that he's put on such an incredible performance over this weekend, but he's, uh, he'll just feel let down by his break, I think. Yeah, and it's annoying to have now Mr. Pot, I think, had he just had a dry break, wouldn't really have been much to critique him on other than the break, but now he's also yeah. missed that shot. It's just so many negative things to be thinking about. It's always very sore if you do go on to lose in a final. Oh, dear. Well, that's an unexpected <laughs> error. <laughs> yeah, this, this frame. <laughs> Jack can believe it either. Well... Such a high quality final and so few mistakes, and then we've had two inexplicable ones in the last couple of shots. But it's like almost Sean's release now, he looks so carefree, doesn't oh, it's, it? Yeah, it's, he's, he's still fuming inside, even though he's back at the table, he will still be absolutely fuming inside. You're, you're going to see just some anger in these shots. The thing is, you know, Sean, a very proud man and a, and a proud player, and he'll want to, he'll want to showcase what he's capable of. Although we already know, you know, Sean and, and what he's able to do, but you know, he wants to play at the best of his ability at all times. Pulls back another frame, and now it's five frames to two. He's three behind. Just can only just take heart and just. It's just we, we do see these games swing. They can change. They can turn on a sixpence, and momentum swings from one way to one side to another. It's a strange position right now. The guy that's leading 5-2 up annoyed because of what's just happened in that frame. The guy that's just won the last frame is annoyed because of what happened earlier in the frame. <laughs> but I think positives for both of them, though. I mean, Jack's still 5-2 up, so a lot for him to be positive about. And as you say, things can turn around. If Chippy can just find a ball off this break and, and clear up, then suddenly it's starting to look a bit more like a game again. Has to find his break. Switch to the other side. Break. Yeah. Oh, how much, how much anger was in that? Well, doesn't give anything away in the face, but must be pretty relieved that that ball's found its way into the pocket. It's not the perfect layout, but that said. No. No, what, not at all. What he really wanted was just a nice open layout, just get one more frame on the board, start building some momentum finally. Instead of which, it looks like one that he's going to have to work for a bit. Yellows and, uh, sorry, reds are more open, but obviously the red on the... On the side rail below the black is horrible. It, it doesn't double, it's hard to develop. Um, but then, having said that, looking at yellows, he's not got an opener, so he's probably going to be forced into taking reds. Hello. <laughs> yeah, well, what you can say is he gave that the kitchen sink. 
generates so much Q power. <laughs> Look at the way the cue ball zipped. I mean, that would have... It's still spinning now. Yeah, no, it was extraordinary. You could see from the slow motion how much follow through the cue flying off his bridge. I mean, that's what he's good at, managing to keep control with playing with that much pace. But I mean, that was a... Well, I'm not sure quite how to explain that shot. He was obviously trying to mix things up a bit and disturb some ball. Oh, and nearly stayed up as well. It just seems to be playing angry at the moment. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure he's currently playing like somebody that's planning to grind his way back into this. I think he's going to throw his arm at a few things. If he, I think if he gets a frame or two more, then he'll feel like he's in this and perhaps get back to a slightly more normal start. Although, I mean, that said, he, he plays this kind of quick attacking style anyway. It's not necessarily the, any reflection on him trying anything less than 100%. That's a nice shot. Just to show a bit more control now. Knows he's, he's never going to be able to get the black out from the position he was in, so he resigned himself to playing as a double. Quite a lot of angle on this ball. That's nice. Nice control. Yeah, he's, that ball's just stopped in time. He didn't yeah. want the cue ball going any further than that. Delightful. Great clearance. A typical carefree Sean clearance, that one. Isn't it ever? Even the black played at a generous pace. It didn't want any more on it than that. Yeah, literally another quarter of an inch up the table. It would have hit the jaw and, and come back out. It only just found its way on, in off the jaw. And um, suddenly he looks a lot more buoyant. He's sort of sat in the corner and suddenly a bit more relaxed. Um, the scoreline looking more respectable. Yeah, and as Jack's sitting there, this is a reminder of the kind of thing that can happen. If, if Sean comes back at you, it happens pretty fast. Yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not like you've got time to adjust to it. He just well, smashes a few frames in. The thing is, Jack with a bit more pressure on his shoulders now, 5-3, because actually his break in this frame, but if he goes dry or in off or any kind of mistakes, the next time he comes to the table, it could be five apiece. So Sean has to feel that he is very much in this match now, and Jack will be feeling the pressure he'll just want to get this out of the way done and dusted right here but he needs his break it's been reliable all weekend he needs one more good one yeah his break's been excellent so far very consistent most important one so far though didn't quite time that as well as he has the others and you saw the cue ball kind of tracking up towards that top left pocket I think. Well, he's got seven easy-ish yellows and one difficult black to contend with it. They had the referee call yellow balls nominated. So it's all about the black. He needs to manufacture an angle from something. There's good thing for Jack is there's maybe two or three balls that he could use. I think he's going to try and move it after this shot. Yeah, he's tried to finish low on one of these two yellows. I think, I think he's got the angle. We can have a look at the overhead. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's perfect. Yeah, and I mean, actually, these are sitting really well for it because there's also a few other balls around. Getting position after the cannon shouldn't be too hard. Oh. Has he sat on... That could have gone wrong. If he sat on top of that yellow. Sean looking on with interest. He's a lot... I mean, the only ball he can pot is the one he's closest to, and... It's a tricky little shot when you're this close. It's hard to pick the angle. Yeah, I mean, the pot you'd fancy for him for, but he's got a bit to think about. The white's going to be travelling around a bit, so that's probably going to be the thing that's occupying more of his time. 
Yeah, there's too much angle, I think, just to kill the cue ball and hold for the one in bulk. So well, Look how much side he's holding. Oh, wow, yeah, he is trying to kill it. And that's exactly what he was trying to do. He was trying to just kill the cue ball off the side and just leave himself any kind of shot on the one in bulk. Uh, this is a tricky clearance. And Sean stands up again in the corner trying to just get a look at the angle. There's any kind of hope. He's keen to get back to the table. Desperate for a mistake from, from Jack. Is he going to play the double? I think that's what he's eyeing up. Yeah, it was a brave shot trying to play it with that much side and kill it. I think a lot of players might have committed to the other way and played it sort of looser and tried to get in and out of balk. But if this double goes in, it will be the right shot. Key to the match right here. He's pulled off a couple of doubles in this match. And there's another one at an important time. Wow. I think he, he did one in the semi-final against uh, Danny and Lisa at a key moment as well. And uh, I think the writing's on the wall for Sean now and I think he well knows it. That one fantastic double has pretty much sealed the deal for Jack. Although, has he landed with a little too much angle? Does he have to send the cue ball up and down the table? I think he's okay. I think he can just, yeah, he can hold. Yeah. Brilliant from Jack Whelan. What a player he has been. What a performance from him this weekend. Absolutely sensational. He punches the table in celebration. Sean Chipperfield, hats off to him. That's still a great, great weekend's work from him. But what a fantastic performance from Jack Whelan. He has won the title of the winner of the Jason Owen Open. And he's still got another final con to contend later on today. A very classy performance the whole way through. Not just in that final, but his route through to the final has been terrific. Very well deserved to have reached this point. So as Jack just celebrates his victory, Nick's just going to pop downstairs to have a word with him and then we're going to have the presentation of the trophy straight afterwards.
So, Jack Whelan, I mean, what an amazing performance this is from you over this weekend, Jack. Where's this kind of form coming from? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. I've, I'm breaking well and I'm feeling confident. And um, I've won most lags this weekend, as weird as it seems, but I'm, get, I'm putting the pressure on my opponent all the time with my break. Yeah. And um, I feel like I'm getting ahead in matches and it's tough for players to come back at me. And we can see what it means to you, little punch on the, of the table, the celebration. I mean, to, to make two finals, that's one under the belt. Yeah, I'm halfway home, so <laughs> I've got one down, one to go. Um, can you do the double? Yeah, of course, yeah. I mean, yeah. Obviously, I've got a lot better chance now than, well, everyone. I've, I've won one event and, um, yeah, couldn't be a good game with yeah. mates, but... I'm out there to win as well as he is. I mean, how exciting for you, though, to come through the field of 256 players twice. I mean, if we'd have asked the bookmaker to price it at the start of the weekend, just for you to make two finals, it would have been probably thousands to one. It's an incredible achievement. Yeah, you need a little bit of luck. Like, I was 5-0 down in the last 32 yesterday morning, and I managed to get through that, and then now look. Yeah. And yeah. sort of like every sort of little roll is going my way, and little knocks, and he's having a bit of bad luck, my opponents, and stuff like that. So just got to take the rough with a smooth and luckily it's gone smooth so far. Yeah. So I'd like to introduce Neil Toms, the tournament director and the, the governor. He's going to step in. Fantastic, mate. What an achievement. Neil, what, what are we going to say about this guy this weekend? I'll tell you what, Jack. Unbelievable to get through a field of this class, to be in the, not to win one of them, to actually be in the, the final of the other one. You've played some awesome pool this weekend. I've watched some great matches, mate. I know you need a bit of luck. Mm -hmm. Obviously, your opponents or whatever, but at the end of the day, I can't thank you enough, mate. Honestly, it's fantastic. Brilliant. Well done, Jack. Well, best of luck on doing the double. Uh, we'll see him at, at five o'clock. Make sure you jo join us for the final. In the meantime, we're going to have some action from the three-man event. We'll see you all soon. Thank you. 